Imagine being an unprepared traveler, lost in a jungle on an island, desperately looking for a source of water. You haven't had water for two days. But look, a nearby lagoon conveniently located in the jungle. But you can't drink from it because it's brackish. Even if you possess a portable water filtration device, chances are the device won't desalinate the water. In that case, survival seems improbable. There aren't many portable filtration technologies that are capable of desalinating water. However, by incorporating a nanoporous graphene filter, the scope of the filter would be expanded which would drastically increase the survival rate of the situation. Not only that, the technology could be applied on a much larger scale to assist water purification at multiple levels. I'm Parker Hamlin. I'm Shred at the side. I'm Henry Chi. I'm Sandez Bashkota. And today we are exploring the potential use of porous graphene for water filtration. We will give you an overview of why we need a better filtration system and how a graphene based filtration membrane might be the solution. Currently, 1 in 10 people lack access to safe water. That's 783 million to 1 billion people that don't get access to safe water each and every day. 6 to 8 million people die annually from the consequence of water-related diseases and disasters. So obviously, current water filtration systems need to change. Currently, they're based on these ideas of osmosis and reverse osmosis. In the normal osmosis process, the solvent naturally moves from an area of lower solute concentration through a filtration membrane to a higher solute concentration area. In the nature, fresh water, which is solvent, will dissolve into a more salty region. In order to achieve the goal of water desalination, an external pressure must be applied to reverse the natural flow of solvent. This process is called reverse osmosis. Under normal situation, any contaminant that has molecular weight higher than 200 would be rejected by the reverse osmosis system. Truly, this process is capable of removing up to 95% of the dissolved sodium and chlorine ions, as well as the majority of organics and bacteria. It still causes a lot of problems, both in nature and energy consumption. Firstly, marine organisms are killed on the intake screen, which is called impingement and small organisms are killed during the processing, aka entrainment. Secondly, reverse osmosis requires a great amount of electricity energy and a huge outlay to take care of sluggish water. These costs usually takes up to 40 to 50% of the total cost for processing water. If there is a material that can effectively reduce the cost of filtration while maintaining a high output, water desalination will become much easier in the future. And we believe all of this may be possible with this wonderful material known as graphene. Graphene is a single layer atomic structure completely made out of carbon atoms. Each carbon atom is covalently bonded to three other carbon atoms to create this monolayer structure. It has incredible properties. It is stronger than steel. It is the most electrically conductive material studied to date, and it is also incredibly impermeable. Surprisingly, you don't have to search very hard to find it. The scientific name for the lead in your pencil is graphite, and graphite is simply many layers of graphene stacked on top of each other. Research has shown that we can create small holes through a process known as etching. The etching process can be done by bombarding the graphene with ions or through oxygen plasma treatment. We can create nanopores that exhibit selective permeability. This process is promising, especially for water filtration purposes. We can create pores that allow water molecules to pass, but prevent ions from flowing across. Studies have shown that pore size of less than 2.3 nanometer in diameter allows for almost 100% salt filtration while keeping water flow rate high. An effective membrane material is determined by two factors, durability and pore size. A new sheet of filtration membrane can effectively block the large contaminant particles and allow smart water particles to pass through. However, the continuous lash of large particles with high pressure will expand the pore size on the membrane and lessen the filtration ability. Being a single atomic layer of graphite, graphene was initially produced by using an adhesive material to peel it off layer by layer. However, this method cannot be used at an industrial scale. Research continues to be carried out to scale up new possibilities of producing large quantities of graphene. 
A new process developed at MIT plans to enable continuous production, which can significantly scale up graphene production, thus making it feasible to produce graphene for water filtration at commercial and industrial scales. This new process is an adaptation of a chemical vapor deposition method that is commonly used to make graphene, where graphene is essentially grown on a copper foil. Instead of a traditional small vacuum chamber where a carbon vapor reacts on, car on the copper foil, the new chamber is in the form of two concentric tubes where there's a thin, carbon of layer, a thin ribbon of carbon that sits over the inner tube. Gases flow into the tubes in a sequential method, first through the annealing zone, which prepares the surface of the copper ribbon, and then the growth zone, which is where graphene is actually formed on the ribbon. The chamber is heated up to approximately 1000 C to perform this reaction. In order to be adjusted for water filtration, oxygen plasma etching, as mentioned before, can be used to create nanopores that allow water molecules to pass, but prevent ions from flowing. The feasibility of water filtration with graphene can be further seen in many institutional and private research projects. For example, uh, the G20 Water Technologies is currently working on creating graphene-coated membranes for the desalination of water. Due to the inherent nature of graphene to be produced in single 2D layers of a single atom thick, it's the optimum filter for the desalination of water. It reduces the overall area the water has to travel through and therefore takes less energy to desalinate the water. The only filter that has been proven to be more efficient is a molybdenum disulfide one as shown. In this depiction, the water molecules are the green spheres and the salt molecules are the red ones. The main advantage of this filter is that the process is faster due to the attractive force molybdenum exerts on the water and the repulsive force from the sulfur to help push it through. Its main downside is the thickness. As we've seen, there are plenty of other means of filtering salt water. The most popular option these days has become the process of reverse osmosis, which essentially shoves salt water through a thin sheet that is able to filter out the salt. The main disadvantage is the amount of pressure that is required to shove the water through. On a nanoscale, what we see as a thin sheet is more like a pipe that the water has to travel through. Using a nanoporous sheet of graphene would mean the water would have to travel a lot less distance and therefore it wouldn't require as much pressure to be pushed through. The theory behind using porous graphene for water filtration is solid. However, there are many aspects behind the production of porous graphene that have to be researched for this to be a viable filtration method for an industrial scale desalination plant. First of all, we have to improve our etching process to limit our pore variability and thus reducing the flux of ions. Secondly, we have to develop a method to strengthen our support of the graphene layer so it can handle large loads and pressure on both sides. Third, we have to research different ways of graphene production because current methods are very expensive. Additionally, we have to decrease the cost of etching. Based off of all the research, it is clear that current water filtration technology can be improved upon. And due to the mechanical, chemical, and physical properties of graphene, it could prove to be an effective and efficient water filter. Additionally, analyzing the durability and inherent structure of graphene, along with the possibility of large-scale production, also shows that graphene can make a great fit as a water filter in the industrial scale. Finally, by comparing the issues and strengths of current water filters with the graphene filter, it seems that graphene water filters could prove to be useful after extensive research in terms of salination as well as filtering other ions. Thus, by analyzing all the sides of the MSE triangle through the videos thus far, graphene is definitely a material that should be considered for water filtration in the future.